Well, hello, hello, hello. It's Vegas Police. See, and this text came in from the family with the tacos. And I need to memorialize this on YouTube and get it out there because if I don't, it'll be a similar situation to what happened two years ago where someone selectively picks through texts and makes me look as bad as possible and assassinates my character and does God knows what. You know who I'm talking about, dinosaur. And I'm not going to go through that again. If I had memorialized everything that took place back then, I wouldn't have gone through everything I went through in December and then I wouldn't have been weak. And then maybe I would have never made this deal with these people. So here we are. Hey, Paul, I just want to say from me and my family that we will always be grateful for the opportunity you gave us. Really, you're grateful. Hmm. You know, we're a family and we'll always stick by each other. Well, that I never really realized it, the level that it was, but OK. We have worked hard for everything. And you know that even with the mistakes we've made along the way, mistakes, we've always tried our best to stand up from it. I'm not sure how the relationship has turned this way truly. We have only ever had respect for you and been grateful. You mean when you're stealing and padding the payroll and doing God knows what with the vendors, you're respectful and grateful? Your definition of respect and my definition of respect, two completely different things. I don't know what Jose has told you. Yeah, put it on Jose. Or what you've seen from anywhere, but we're all good with each other. We're just trying to work our asses off to have a business that we could call our own. But it's not your own. You have 50% partners, the ones who put up the $40,000, the ones who put in all of their social media. Do you think anybody would have known you were over there? The costs there are ridiculous. No one would have known you were there if it wasn't for Jose's social media. We had to close down Henderson. It just wasn't working for us. The condition the building was in, not much promotion. The area, it was all against us. I know we had high payroll and a lot of costs, but we followed your advice and really believed it when you said we would build this from the ground up. There were too many costs to work it out because we were just starting over there and we were almost at break even. But you have zero patience. We were in business two months and we were break even. The building was never in perfect condition. As the landlord said, it was. We put a good amount into fixing the AC once it broke down and didn't fully fix it. You know, the cost to fix the AC would have been thousands. Yeah, the cost to fix the AC would have been thousands, but you're OK stealing thousands. We don't know what it had been worth it because it was hot there and it turned people away. So much that we had customers saying and and almost treating to report that we might have a workers in inhumane conditions. Yeah, I never heard that, but OK. Also, the fridges would break down like every other week. I felt like it was just a waste of money along with the food that went bad. I'm not sure if you're aware of these costs. All of these costs, along with no foot traffic, just didn't make sense, especially knowing the debt from the produce meat and more importantly, the sales taxes. <clears throat> I was just trying to reach out to Jose to explain all of this and have both your opinions, but never got a response. Because you had seven people working there. I understand that the location has no foot traffic. I understand that the location is challenged as far as the equipment and the air conditioning. But what I do not understand is why were your mom's friends just sitting there on the payroll collecting checks? You're never going to come up for an ex with an excuse for that. All the equipment is in a storage unit in perfect condition. We didn't want to leave it there for the landlord and just took it in case and took it all there with everything that was in Henderson. We left the building in perfect condition and we recorded and took pictures of everything and we did everything with best intentions to have everything organized for everyone. So why won't you give back the equipment? If you're doing everything with best intentions and you're trying to be good people and you're just working hard, why won't you give back the equipment? Why do I have to go out and restock the entire place after two days of begging for the equipment? We have talked to Lily and this was just a smarter thing to do since our priority is the state taxes. We've cut down Henderson and I've cut down the people at Washington as well. We're really only going to have two or three people working with us. This will drastically drop the payroll and unnecessary expenses. Oh, now you want to do that. Now that you think that Washington belongs to you, now you want to work with the right number of people. Now you want to drastically drop the payroll and necessary expenses you've been burning through. We are trying to our best to get out of this hole before it's too late and we get in deeper problems. Trust me, it's been hard to have to do this all on my own, but I'm trying my hardest to get the numbers where they should be with no one supporting me and keeping me in the dark. We will never bite the hand that feeds us and me and my whole family will never be ungrateful for the support you've given us. Really? But you've got my equipment and you won't return it. Here's my response. That's all great. I'm glad you have each other to hold on to while the ship is sinking. You should have, you should have, could have had everything but between the stealing and the no work jobs and the vendors I do not trust, now your ship is sinking. I would feel bad if I didn't talk to you six times and tell you that you are clueless.
Put the equipment back at 750 Boulder now. I am done playing with you. Gratitude does not look like this. Lionel tried reaching out to Jose to get an answer on what to do next for Henderson, but never got a response. If you were continuing to work it or not and see what was going to happen. We didn't steal any equipment. We just moved it to see what to do next. Really? You moved it to see what to do next, but you won't give it back. Jose told us that you had another place over in Blue Diamond that we were discussing, and I thought it was going to be something. But we never got any response. My decision was made so that we wouldn't sink any further, and we didn't receive any answer, and you know we're in a lot of debt. All the equipment is in a storage unit in perfect condition. I'll take you there. We can have a conversation, and we can get everything straightened out and come to an agreement. You see, what they're trying to do is they're trying to hold the equipment so that I give them the store on Washington, which I'm never going to give them the store on Washington. The store on Washington can make thirty or forty thousand dollars a month net, which they think they're going to hold in onto for themselves, and the store at seven fifty, Bold South Boulder Highway makes zero. It's break even at best. There is no agreement to come to. You are not getting the good shop and giving us the shitty one. Why would I trust you after everything you have done to me? Why? Put the equipment back now. This is not a game. You're going to get less and less out of this. The more trouble you cause, you put it back, and we will try and fix it. All you're doing is destroying yourself. It's incredible to me, really. There's a saying in the Bible, God forgive them for they know not what they do. But you keep doing it. It's one thing after another. So they stole the equipment out of the shop. They say they're just storing it, but they refuse to give it back. We've asked them to give it back. We've asked our accountant, Lily, who they reference here to give it back. But nothing. Not a knife, not a plate, nothing. So that's where we are now. We have to restock the store at 750 South Boulder Highway ourselves. We're going to be open on Monday. We're going to try and make something out of that. We still own half of the store at Washington. We're not walking away from that. But all of a sudden now they want to fix it. All of a sudden now they want to fire all of their friends, all of their family, and get their payroll right. Because it was absolutely physically impossible for them to split the profit from Washington with us. They had to destroy the place. Because they couldn't stomach working and giving half the money to somebody else. You know, the partners who put up all the money, the partners who put up all their social media, they couldn't stomach a 50-50 split. And that's a fact. Vegas policy.